So now I want to show you how to use the mineral section of this igneous rock chart. And if, again, you get out your reference table on page six, you'll see this chart at the bottom. We talked about the top of this chart uh, in terms of igneous intrusive and extrusive rocks and their composition or their color, density, and their composition. What I want to talk about now is this bottom part. And this is the, a really important part of the reference table. It shows you what these minerals, what minerals make up each of these rocks. And it's those minerals that determine these characteristics, whether it's lighter in color, lower in density, or felsic or mafic. The composition determines that. And there's lots of questions on the regents or other questions where they ask what minerals are present in these rocks, or they give you a, a rock sample and say it has 35% potassium feldspar. Um, and 35% quartz. What type of rock is it? Well, you can use this chart to help you figure that out. The one thing that is very confusing on this that you have to be careful of is this scale right here. Um, you can't just say that if there's potassium feldspar here, like you normally would read a graph, 75% is potassium feldspar if it's a granite. That's not how you use this graph. Let me show you what you're going to do. If you take a rock sample, and if I were to draw a line on the reference table right here. These samples, obsidian, pumice, vesicular rhyolite, rhyolite, granite, and pegmatite, all have the same composition in terms of the minerals in them. They're all the same composition. They have potassium feldspar, quartz, plagioclase feldspar, biotite, and amphibole. They have all the same minerals. But the question is, what's the percentage in each of those? So, of each of those. So to do that, what you want to do is take a piece of paper, set it on your scale, and copy this scale down. And you can see that each of these go up by about 5%. So you have 5% for each of those lines, mark it down there, and then you'll have 25, 50, 75, and 100. The high end actually doesn't really matter as much. So if I want to know how much potassium feldspar is in a common sample of, let's say, granite, I will take a line and go down like this, and an average sample of granite one sample of granite could have, and if I look at this, 5, 10, 15, 20, 20%. So it's 20% potassium feldspar. This potassium feldspar, by the way, is also called K feldspar because the elemental symbol for potassium is K, and it's called K spar. K spar, it's just a short version of that. So 20% potassium feldspar. If I look here and I put the bottom here, 25, 30, 35, 40, about 40% quartz. So is it any reason why quartz or granites or pegmatites or rhyolites are light color? White colored quartz, 40%, potassium feldspar pink to white, 20%, 60% of the rock is, is light colored mineral. That's why they're light in color. They also are silicates, so that's why they're called felsic. If we look here, 10, 20%, about 20% plagioclase feldspar. I go here, it's about 10% biotite. And if I go here, 10% amphibole. So if you look, 20, 40, 60, 80, 90, 100. 100%, if I take a sample of granite, Take a sample of granite, and I look at it, I see potassium feldspar in it, I see quartz in it, I see plagioclase feldspar, biotite, and amphibole. And if I were to look at those percentages, I could see that some samples would have about, if a sample has 40% quartz, 20% this, and so on, then it is, and then it's in this line. The second part of the question would be, well, what's it look like? What are the size of the crystals? Crystal size determines everything else. So if it has coarse crystals, coarse grain, one to 10 millimeters, then I know it's in this row and it's got these minerals in it, it's a granite. If it's an extrusive rock with the same composition, but it doesn't have gas pockets, but it does have crystals, then it's rhyolite. So we use this chart to help us figure out the type of rocks that we're working with and um, help us identify the rock based on what minerals make them up. The same is true for this side. If I take a look at, at this, 
I can do these percentages for each of these and I'll have you do that. And you'll see that dark green, green, black, black, those minerals are dark in color. That's why these are darker, darker rocks. They have minerals that are less rich in silica, more rich in magnesium and iron. And so that gives us those mafic characteristics. If you have any questions, please let me know.